Joining me live now from Canada is Terry Maluski, the senior Canadian journalist and author uh, and someone who knows more than a thing or two about India-Canada relations. He's written seminal books about it as well. Uh, Terry, good to have you. Thanks very much for your time here on India Today. I wanted your take, Terry, on what's happened in the last 12 hours because it's been another escalation in this ongoing crossfire. We saw the deposition by the Canadian Prime Minister where... Uh, uh, you know, he spoke about how he could have disrupted India's G20 showing. He said there was intelligence, but no evidence just yet. India has hit back. There's been a, a government press conference that said that this entire situation has been precipitated only by Trudeau. He's responsible for it. How do you read this latest escalation, Terry? Well, I find it very odd, and I'll tell you why. Uh, it seems to me very strange that the Indian government right now Blasting Trudeau again and saying that these charges are baseless and false and so on, mm. while at the same time telling the Americans that their charges, which are basically the same, yeah. uh, they're taking very seriously and they have appointed a high level committee and that committee is on its way, or maybe they're in the United States now. And uh, the person identified as the uh, intelligence officer in New Delhi, who supposedly handled the plot against the apartment Singh Panoon in New York has now been arrested and no action has been taken and the allegations are being taken very seriously so the theory that has been advanced as I understand it by the Indian side is that uh, oh these are completely separate files oh, these are separate cases well not if you read the US indictment I'm sorry but if you look at the US indictment from the FBI and the mm -hmm. Department of Justice in New York, you will see, uh, look at paragraph six, look at paragraph 28, you will see the alleged handler who is uh, facing trial now. But, but isn't there a difference, Terry? Isn't there a, isn't there a big difference by Trudeau's own admission? It's intelligence that has been shared and not evidence, and that's what the government has said. The U.S. Well, yes, system, okay. the U.S. procedures are far more detailed, and it's a different relationship as well. Uh, well, uh, I, I'm not sure it's a particularly different relationship. Um, I, I think too much has been made, if you'll forgive me, of the alleged vast difference between intelligence and evidence. Some intelligence is evidence, and some isn't. I mean, if you have intelligence uh, that something happened and you, have, and you take a picture of it and it really did happen, it's evidence. But you, can, you I don't think that that's nothing much turned the distinction between the two. It doesn't mean that Trudeau's allegations are false. But, but does it always, always okay. defended India's objection to the uh, atrocious and shameful toleration of uh, Khalistani threats yep. uh, in Canada by Canadian politicians. I think it's appalling and it should change. Mm. But uh, as it stands now, uh, India is basically denying on the one hand and conceding on the other. Well, pick no, but, a lane. You have to but, have one. Have no, but why one. should... In, but, but, Terry, I'm, I'm trying to understand with the greatest of respect, why should India choose a lane when... And you know this better. India has repeatedly... Uh, shared more than just intelligence. It has shared more than just, uh, you know, transcripts or intercepts, which are the nature of the content that has apparently been shared by the Canadian side this time over the Nijar killing. Uh, you know, why should India be inclined, uh, you know, to conduct an investigation based on intelligence when Canada, under Trudeau and previous administrations, has never once cooperated, uh, uh, you know, in, in real terror cases with exponentially more detailed information than just quote-unquote allegations and intelligence. Well, I have conceded already, uh, I think, and I do just about every day, uh, that Canada's role in le letting and normalizing yes. the glorification of terrorists, uh, Palestinian terrorists and so forth, uh, is a disgrace. Mm. It should stop. And uh, I would like to see Canadian politicians say, OK, from here on in, you have a Vaisakhi parade glorifying the Air India bomber. We're not going to attend. We're done with that now. We're turning a page. We're not going to pander to Khalistani violent extremists. But all I'm saying to you now is that India is painting itself into a smaller and smaller corner. You cannot, you cannot say 
that the two cases, the Canadian and American cases, are different. On those paragraphs which I cited, 6 and 28, the accused, Nikhil Gupta, is quoted, uh, was recorded saying to the hitman he had hired in New York, that look, so, Jha is also a target of this but, same but, plot. But, de- but, 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 but Terry, you know, you're saying, you're saying India needs to choose a lane. Why does India need to choose a lane? India has chosen a lane. I mean, you know, well, it, you, it, it, you cannot possibly conf- conflate Canada and the United States on this front. I mean, there may be some, uh, uh, there may be some alignment between uh, Canada and the United States as far as Khalistani terrorists are concerned. But surely India is going to deal with this in the way it sees fit, in, in its own interest. Uh, you know, one particular raw officer, according to reports, has been, has been dismissed now. The United States has said on public record that it is satisfied there is a perception here that that part of it is going to be closed, but Trudeau's war continues. He hasn't even supplied any information. Well, I, I, firstly, I don't believe that he hasn't supplied any information, and I see a, a, a lot wrong with the way this has been handled on the Canadian side. But also, mm. to be see a lot wrong with the way it's been handled on the Indian mm. side. Both sides have miscalculated gravely, and but at the moment, I'm simply pointing you yeah. to the U.S. indictment and saying, well. How can you say that we take that seriously, but not what Trudeau is saying? Well, it's the same mm. thing. It is the same plot against various Khalistanis. So okay. we can't have it both ways, is my point. I, I, I take your point, and uh, we may disagree, but it's still valuable to have that perspective from Canada. Terry Maluski, thanks very much, as always, for your time here on India Today. Also bringing on to our show now is Daniel Boardman, he's senior correspondent with the National Telegraph. Uh, Daniel, I should first uh, thank you because I didn't even know I was on that Canadian list until I saw your social media post and I saw your tweet. So first of all, thank you for alerting me to the fact that my show, the show you're on right now, Daniel, uh, is on some Canadian foreign ministry list about misinformation and foreign interference. What crossed your mind when you saw that? You know, you're in Canada, Daniel. Uh, you know, foreign interference uh, is something that, uh, you know, that is part of a lot of media coverage uh, in Canada right now. And here's this list with my name and a list of a bunch of other, you know, journalists here in India, uh, you know, with some very dangerous claims, misinformation, foreign interference, and, you know, hijacking narrative and stuff like that. It's so incredibly stupid. Um, yet it is indicative that there are the, these, the people who are this are, are dangerous, highly incompetent, um, incredibly stupid, but very dangerous. So right now what we are doing is we're doing misinformation and manipulating people with uh, foreign interference somehow. Um, listen, Canada's sort of a silly place when it comes to like what is misinformation, what's disinformation, especially the foreign ministry. I mean, personally, I've been accused to my face. Um, I once asked a question to a to, to a candidate running for office about their uh, connections, and I was accused of being an Iranian bot farm in real <laughs> life. So, by Canadian standards, this isn't the most ridiculous thing you heard, but it's. To, to, to claim that an allied country, their media, is somehow a foreign influence operation is a pretty wild claim from Canada. Yeah. It'd be one thing if we made this about Qatar and we said, okay, everyone in Al Jazeera is, is an operative of this government, which is also, okay, that, that's, that's one way to go. But if you want to start to set this precedent that anyone on an allied media network giving it opinions about your country constitutes foreign interference is ludicrous. And even under oath, our security in, in, in administration admitted, India doesn't want to influence policy in yeah. Canada. They want to influence conversation. Well, I want to influence conversation in, in, in all different countries to talk about the things I want them to talk about. This exactly. Isn't, this isn't foreign interference. Like you can't set the precedent that, Media in allied countries can't talk about Canada if the government of Canada doesn't approve of the way they're talking. That's asinine. This is an asinine precedent, but it's totally in character of Melanie Gilly and Justin Trudeau and, and a lot of them. So, it, it, 
You know, but help us understand this just a little bit, Daniel, because, you know, uh, surely Trudeau has other priorities. Uh, you know, we do know he's having a little bit of, uh, uh, quite a bit of political trouble. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's almost satirical, you know, when you say these are wild claims. Uh, you know, I agree, because w when I first saw this, I thought someone was pulling a fast one. This seemed like some kind of, uh, you know, a, a satirical parody, maybe, on something that Trudeau would actually do. And there is so much satire about the Canadian Prime Minister out there. Uh, but to think that, you know, government resources are being used to, uh, you know, identify things that might affect the narrative, you know, listing some of these handles, including mine, as having bigger reach than Canadian media, and therefore it's dangerous, uh, you know, for the public at large. Uh, you know, it seems funny, but I agree with you. It is dangerous. I mean, it seems like someone's painting a target on our backs. Yeah, I mean, it's listen, the, it's the ideologues within the Liberal Party, okay? And the Liberal Party under Trudeau has turned into a bit of a cult of personality. It's run through the prime minister's office. Um, they have, you know, pretty good election control. And they have a bunch of, uh, let's let's be honest, crazies in there. And um, sort of India falls into the sort of uh, persona non grata among a lot of ideological radicals. It's yeah. a lot of the same things to do with Israel, right? There's a hardcore base of Islamists that uh, don't like India. Um, and then, you know, now the global left is turning against India out of solidarity, um, especially um, using the excuse of Neander Modi. Um, so, like, in in the Western conversation, Modi is a scare word to the, mm. the institutional left because someone said he's Trump of India, and that means yeah. he's bad because this is how we think now. And, you know, the true anons, as we call them, the, the Trudeau media sycophants, they're trying to, like, push this Polyev is Modi um, narrative now that, to try and mix all these things together. So there's, like, there's that tin to it where there's uh, the radical leftists in our country uh, despise India. Uh, so it makes sense to me knowing these people and what they think about different things. I mean, like, you're seeing this incredible hostility building yeah. towards Israel and India within our foreign policy core. And I think that has to do a lot with just they've stacked the deck with a lot of radicals, ideologues. And this is the result. The, 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 the final question that I'd like to ask you on this uh, discussion, then, uh, it's been three days since this entire, uh, you know, this, this fresh cycle of confrontation between India and Canada have taken things to a historic low. Uh, how do you see things pan out from, uh, you know, from here? There was that deposition yesterday. You had, uh, uh, you had uh, uh, Trudeau saying all kinds of things, including, uh, you know, my particular favorite from that is, uh, you know, him saying, uh, you know, I had the ability to uh, really uh, spoil things for India during the G20, but I didn't do that because, you know, uh, I didn't want to uh, spoil a great event. Uh, you know, to most people here in India, Daniel, that came across as, you know, arrogant and entitled and self-absorbed and frankly quite irresponsible. Is that how Trudeau always is to say, you know, I could have disrupted it, but I didn't. That's how, what a nice guy I am. I mean, yes, all four of those do accurately describe Justin Trudeau and his pattern of behavior. It's arrogant. It's irresponsible. It's short-sighted. It's self-serving. Yeah, that's yeah, that's par for the course. That's exactly what happens. And like you're already behind India's. You might be, you know, a few hours ahead, but you're living in the past. The, the country of Canada is already like two and a half Justin Trudeau scandals away. Uh, we're already off of uh, the he's ruined our relationship with India. It, the, the, the major focus now is there's 11 traitors in parliament and he won't tell us uh, who they are. And he's trying to blame that on the conservative party. He's trying to blame the fact that there's traitors in his parliament because of the conservative party, even though he's letting Chinese foreign nationals vote in liberal party um, elections, because why not? Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how it actually plays out. Uh, there's been an external affairs ministry press conference that just took place, and uh, each side appears to be waiting for what the next side is going to do. So this, is, this isn't going to end very soon. So, Daniel, you're going to be on India today a whole lot this week and over the weekend. Thanks very much, as always, for your time, Daniel. Have a good one, and we'll see you back here on air very soon. Now, meanwhile... It's great doing misinformation with you. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. Misinformation on Five Live. That's what Trudeau's priorities are. Well...